live with another episode of Goal Horns and Fight Songs. I am your host as always, Wes, or Painted Bronco on Twitter, and joining me is Mike, or Maro04 on the Twitters. How are you doing, Mike? Doing pretty well. How are you? Uh, you know, the season's over. It's that winding down time. Uh, there's still plenty of other hockey on, though, so I've been following AHL and NHL and ECHL stuff to, to see where players are doing and what they're doing. Yeah, same here a little bit. Uh, mostly NHL because they have a, still have a team involved in, in the playoffs. Or the hunt for the playoffs, I should say. I was looking at it earlier today, and there was like 10, 10 guys whose names I, I knew all in AHL games tonight. So, That's um, Guys all over all over the league from from the conference doing their thing at the pro levels um brandon bussy is struggling a little bit he's in a 4-4 tie with uh i believe it's lehigh valley is who he's playing against tonight um and his, he's in his third straight start so tonight's episode's kind of going to be a little bit of like where are they um or how are they doing type of thing because we're at that point like i said in the season where i think they're doing coaching meetings right now as far as the league's concerned um you know, guys are constantly picking where they're going to be. The transfer portal's doing its thing. Um, so I figure we touch on a little bit of that. And then figure once the full schedules are released, you know, we'll do a, a schedule breakdown for each team. Um, and we'll just kind of play these episodes by ear. We got some, you know, we're waiting for some seasons to end so that we can plan some things a little bit better before we start making actual announcements um but there is stuff in the works uh, and, and we're always trying to add to to what we got going on so yeah we have some ex- exciting things in the future it just uh it's going to take until the off season for the rest of the hockey leagues to to come about and then we can make some announcements and have a little more fun other than just a all chalky schedule breakdown <laughs> Then a couple of yahoos who just followed two specific teams, you know, talking. So, um, we have Brand- Brandon Bussey's on his third straight start with the Providence Bruins. Uh, he's two and zero so far in his pro career with a, a one shutout. Um, I guess he's struggling a little bit tonight. He let in three goals in the first period, but since then Providence come back to to take a lead. I believe they're up, or they might be tied again four four, but they were up four three for a little bit. Um, so still getting used to, to the pro game. Um, Ethan Frank scored his first career goal in the AHL over the week. Uh, Josh Passal also scored his first career goal in, in, the, in the ECHL over the week. So and the guys are stepping up and, and showing up and, and playing good hockey. And, and I think in every game so far of his pro career, Ethan Frank has played against a former teammate. Um that's ridiculous. He he's played against Wilkesbury Scranton, I believe, twice. Who has former Bronco Blue Liner Cam Lee? He's played against Lehigh Valley, who have former Bronco Wade Allison. Uh, Providence with Brandon Bussey, and and he's playing um, Wilkesbury again tonight. So so once again squaring up against Cam Lee, who who he was all three of which you know teams are. are guys that he played with and, and most recently being Brandon Bussey, like they were three weeks of not being teammates and then saw each other as opponents on the ice. So, and you know, uh, coincidentally, Ethan Frank has been on the ice for all four of Brandon Bussey's, uh, shutouts this year, three with the Broncos and, and one with the Bruins. Yeah. I think he would have been okay with Brandon having three been on the ice for three of them. But, uh, you, you know, Brandon texted him after, Oh, I thought you were uh, thought you were a good goal scorer there, bud. Uh, what happened? Couldn't get past me, just like practice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was trying some some old tricks that might have worked in practice a couple times. But Brandon was more than up to the challenge. So, uh, good dudes all around and, and showing that they're, they they were made the right moves and in, in going to the pro ranks. Um, one thing that I just uh, thought of was there are three currently right now they're they're in the third period down three one but for the philadelphia flyers there are three rivals playing on the same team now 
uh, with Noah Cates, Ronnie Adderd, and Bobby Brink. Mm-hmm. Which that's kind of fun to see. They they all played uh, NCAA tournament. Obviously the the frozen face off, and now Denver won the national championship. And hey, hey okay, well, beat all you guys now. Now I guess I'll come join you. Yeah, guess we can be friends now. And then, uh, like I said, I was looking for you and um, Cam Johnson's playing tonight. From U a uh, former UND goalie is playing tonight. Um. Shane Gersich is playing tonight in the AHL ranks. Um, Drew Warad's playing with Grand Rapids Griffins, I believe losing to the Iowa Wild, or at least they were the last I checked. Um, There's someone else. Who was the other one? Sweeney? Oh, uh. believe he's with Iowa. Oh, Nick Sweeney. Yes. That's yep. the other yep. guy's name. is. I had yeah. all this written down somewhere, and then I lost my piece of paper with all my notes. So we're trying to do this from remembering, and it's not going well. I need to look. Uh, last I looked, Kobe Bender and Kobe Roth had not. I looked earlier today. They had not played a game. I don't know if they're in the lineups tonight, if they're playing for uh, Texas and – oh, I don't Shoot. believe Texas is playing tonight, or if they are, they have the late game. Um, uh, they are not. The last game to start is San Diego and whoever Vegas' is affiliate is. Okay. Um, what is today? today is the... I didn't look at the schedule. I, I was just looking up stats. And one of the uh, stats that I saw that I missed last week was Ryan Fanti made his first AHL start and ended up getting his first AHL win. Didn't wasn't a stellar stat line, but he made 40, or 36 saves on 41 shots and they got the win 6-5. Uh, they were solid and I don't remember who they even played but they were able to come back in the third period and make it a close game uh, a lot of close games in the ahl right now you just couldn't cleveland are tied 2-2 uh springfield and rochester are tied 2-2 lehigh valley and providence 4-4 in the third wilkesbury is up 2-0 on hershey and rockford's up 2-0 on chicago and iowa is up 1-0 on grand rapids but I mean, definitely, if you're if you're a fan of any team in the the NCHC, chances are that there's a player from at least one of these schools, you know, in, playing in in the AHL right now and and doing a pretty decent job of showing that they deserve to be there and making a bid for the big programs coming up next season. Yeah, they the kids coming up. They're gonna see all all these guys playing at the pro ranks in general. And I think the ECHL is getting more of a reputation within these past few years of being a more skilled and developmental league with guys coming from the ECHL through the AHL to the NHL, as opposed to back when Paul Bissonette played and just a fighting league that all you're going to, you might have a couple scores here or there, but you're not really going to make it. Uh, with with all these kids and the talent, especially coming out of the NCHC signing, especially with South Carolina, that's going to make it a more competitive league and help that league move forward. Yeah, I mean, there's still like a, the the ECHL the ECHL game is is kind of is so different though because you only it's the two linesmen one ref system, and it, it gets kind of a little bit chippier and, and players get away with a lot more, so it's it's harder to say it's that clean. Uh, clean game that you see in the AHL and the NHL level, um, mm-hmm. but but if you're good enough to compete and and get away from most of it and show that you deserve a chance at, at a higher level, like I'm, I'm sure guys are guys are going and, and you know you've we've seen people like um, Jordan Bennington, he was a ECHL mm-hmm. goalie here in Kalamazoo and he's gone up and has a Stanley Cup to his name, so it's definitely possible to 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 leave that level and, and move up and, and reach the pinnacle of hockey. So 
uh, Scott, Scott Darling was another one. And it, the way I equate it to is the NAHL for juniors. They have the two lines been one ref system, but you get a lot of D1 recruits out of the NAHL. Uh, Ryan Fanti was one of them. Hunter Shepard was another. Hunter Miska was another one that went from the NAHL to UMD. All uh, Miska didn't win one. Kaz got to a national championship and then Fanti won two of them. And they they all came from the NAHL, so it, it's just proof that if you're good enough in that system to get away from the chippiness, you're gonna get noticed. Oh, a hundred percent. The other thing I was looking at was you know um, guys who are who are signing their new commits, um, and and two players who who entered the transfer portal from Western have have made their commitments known. Scooter Bricky, a defenseman is going to the Ohio State University. And Nick Strom, who didn't play this year, uh, I believe he was a freshman, incoming freshman. Um, he is changed, to, or he is now committed to RPI. So, And and I actually got the chance to, to have a little conversation with uh, Bricky at my at, at work on, on my fun job, I should say, or I guess. Um, Your side hustle. <laughs> yeah. And it, it really came down to just, like, which I think a lot of these kids are, are coming down to, it, or why, like, the transfer portal, like, a good side of the transfer portal is, he, he was like, I committed to three coaches who are no longer with the program. And instantly I was like, yeah, that makes 100%, that makes 100% um, sense. Sense, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, that makes 100% sense. Like, you you committed to playing with these guys and and I I can't remember who the first coach was it might have been Ben Barr I believe he was here for a short period of time before going to take the I want to say the head coaching role at, at Maine maybe um but you know he, he was one of the guys who brought him in and and Dave Shayak who's now an assistant coach at St. Cloud and and uh Andy Murray, who who has since left the program, and and it was kind of like I, I figured most guys would have left, um, had they known like guys who are in the portal now probably would have taken the same step to leave the portal, had they known Andy was going to leave early, or earlier, in mm-hmm. the, like they they kind of got stuck, um, in this weird position where it wasn't necessarily known that what they were going to be able to do because I believe he left in like August or something. So, and, 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 you know, different coaches ask different things of different players. So it's one of those things where it made sense to him. It makes sense to me as to why he would want to leave. I think we see it in all kinds of sports. Um, you know, we even see it in football when a, when a coach leaves a program, there's always a few guys who, who try to either join the new program or, transfer out looking for something a little bit different so Mm -hmm. yeah i know we had that with with pj fleck coming to minnesota we did have a couple guys come from western uh umd is losing or has lost connor kelly to providence hunter lelig is still in the transfer portal the good news that came this week is tanner Ladderoot and uh jesse jocks they are staying back and playing uh, next year with us. I think they were both seniors and they decided to stay for their fifth year. Hunter Lele graduated and he's going to go as a grad grad transfer somewhere. And they're going to be getting a solid player wherever he ends up. Uh, And Connor Kelly, he was, he was a very good player for us. And so Providence is picking up a, a very good transfer to add to their program that's already a fairly strong program as it is. And that was, that was another thing too, that they, uh, he brought up. It was like, you know, there's guys who uh, are um, making decisions to, to stay an extra year. And when you're guaranteed to, or you're, you're said you they told you, you have a spot coming in as a freshman and now you don't have playing time. Cause there's a guy who stayed an extra year. Cause he got a year cause of COVID. 
Like all these things are trickling down and they're affecting the players more than they're affecting like the institutions. And it's, it's one of those things that it's kind of unfair and you start to realize the the situation these guys are in and, and the decision that they're having to make to, to lose a scholarship or to give up ice time. And, and you also have to look at the fact that like some of these kids, they committed to these schools at like 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty stupid. The route that hockey hockey's like seems to be the worst with it as far as that when you're allowed to commit to a to a university and and make a decision that affects you more so than just your next year because you all juniors and, and you stay a little bit longer outside of college you come to college a little bit later in life and and you might have a different idea of what you want to do when you finally make it to college than you did when you said yeah this is where i'm going to play yeah and that's the i think it was adam johnson as a sophomore, they can't officially sign, but they they can give their verbal commitments. And hockey def- definitely is an early age commitment sport where these colleges want them super young. Uh, and then they, they can develop them the way that they want to. The flip side of it is, I, and I was just thinking about this the other day, there's not, uh, other than basketball, which has changed a little bit throughout the years, there's not many sports. You look at football and basketball, you have to stay three years in, in NCAA football before you can move. Is it two now? I believe it's two. Okay. I know it has been three. Uh, well, you have to be at least a junior. You don't necessarily have to play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to play two years, but you don't necessarily have to play your third year. You just have to be a junior. Uh, But baseball, it's so rare that a kid comes out and they're 21, 22 years old. And all of a sudden they're in the major leagues hockey. It's rare too, but you come out of college and boom, you're playing in the pros. You don't have to necessarily go through the minor league process that, potentially basketball or especially baseball you do because you can go play in baseball you can play three four years of college then you're in double a for a couple of years and you're in triple a for a couple of years then you make make a few million dollars in the major leagues if you're lucky uh, well the other thing with baseball too is you you have uh if you don't sign your your draft you can be drafted multiple times in baseball mm-hmm. uh and, and the other thing that hockey does too is you can be added literally at the, the end of the season. You know, mm-hmm. no, no other sport can you really go from college to the pros in the middle of a season. That was the other thing I was thinking of is all of a sudden you don't see, okay, uh, hockey, they draft the kids out of high school or college, depending. Uh, there's a lot it's, of... I think it's 18 to... 20 if you're in the u.s or canada is you is the draft eligible ages and then it's a little bit longer it's a little bit extended for europe yeah Uh, um you can be a little bit older and still drafted to a team from europe but it's they draft them and then okay you're gonna go play juniors and then depending on which route you take you're either playing juniors in canada or you're playing juniors in the u.s and then college but i I was thinking about it. you don't see a kid from uh, Kentucky as soon as their as soon as their season ends, they're going to play for the New Orleans Pelicans. You don't right. see mm-hmm. a kid in the fall uh, or at end of January they play their bowl game for Tennessee and then they're playing for. Vegas it, baseball it doesn't happen that way either hockey is the only one where as soon as your season's done hey welcome to the team boys yeah it's I mean they're they're able to um you know join in the middle of a season they have a agent or an advisor throughout the entire college process you know no other sport allows them to do that I think in I think they changed it in basketball where you can declare for the NBA draft 
And then if you decide that you don't want to play, you can come back as long as you haven't signed with an agency yet. So like mm-hmm. that, that's a little bit different. Um, football wants you to declare for the draft. Your 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 college football career is done. So if you if you leave early, like you can't come back to the college. Um, so each sport's a little bit different in the way they handle it. But it seems like hockey is the most tied to what they're able to do when they leave and like the pro levels like they they seem to go hand in hand and they almost like college is another uh, minor league team almost it it really is and and because they're even able to go to like these training camps that are run by the team you know by pro teams and if you're a player who say drafted by Detroit like you're going to the Detroit training camp you're not going to the Dallas Stars training camp. Um, or if you're a free agent, you know, you, you can kind of, you can get invited to some of these training camps and, and maybe get either drafted if you're still in that draft eligible age or, um, you know, if a team looks at you and remembers who you are from attending camps and you end up signing a deal later. So, And the, the other part of it is if other teams were – we're going to do that. Well, you just look up the, in baseball, the September call-ups. You have these guys that have earned their way. They expand the roster, which is a lot less now than it used to be. But you're giving guys opportunities. You would you would think maybe in the NHL, it'd be, okay, these lesser teams, they're going to give more guys an opportunity, which is true. But look at what Kale McCarr did. As soon as his season was done, as soon as he was eliminated, Boom, he's playing for the Colorado Avalanche in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Right. Which I don't think most sports would do. They they trust the development that much that they can all right. Well, we're in the playoffs. Uh have at her, bud. Yeah, even you know, pre NCHC days, Danny DeKaiser did the same thing. He went from finishing up the CCHA tournament. Uh, we got bumped in the first round of the NCAA tournament and he's playing for the Detroit Red Wings in a playoff series against the Colorado Avalanche. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like, interesting the way they do it. And, you know, the only one who's really, like, left a college season early uh, to go play in the pro ranks that I know of is the goalie from Minnesota. Like, that was so – seemed so far out of the norm. But, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I guess even that can happen, so. Yeah, it definitely isn't the norm – I I should read more into that situation because maybe it was they were so hurt for goalies and hey if you leave right now we'll give you an extra little little bonus and you can come play for us and sign your contract now I don't know the full situation it was uh it was just weird and I think it's weird for a team to allow that because they had to have given the go ahead because they're the ones who's signing him right they would have to say okay yeah that it it makes sense if you want to do that we will sign you you will get to play so there had to been some sort of conversations going on there it's just weird that they didn't want him to develop the the whole way through to see through the the season I believe I saw him playing somewhere. Um, he's in the AHL now. Playing. Where did I see him playing? Uh, isn't he Carolina? Yes. I believe he started tonight for one of the AHL teams. I was I was looking at all the games. There. Uh, uh, he is with the uh, Rockford Ice Hogs. Rockford. Yeah. Really. Jack LaFontaine, right? That's who we're talking about? Minnesota? Yeah. Game? Yeah. He's with the Rockford Ice Hogs at the moment. So. Oh. So he must have gotten interesting. You know, the only other player I can think of that I, that I know for sure left in, like, the middle of a season, um, but, did, but this one didn't go pro, but Paul Cotter, who now plays for the Silver Knights, I think he played like eight games for Western and then decided to uh, leave school and go to the OHL, the London Knights. 
Mm. I believe that's where he ended up going, and then later made you know he's had a couple uh, starts with Vegas and has a couple NHL goals this year, so it definitely worked out for him. But it was one of those situations where it's uh, he he left kind of suddenly, and then now he's you know a, a perennial player in the AHL and has had some NHL experience. So a guy that I'll I'll, I'll root for, but don't necessarily have the strongest ties to as far as Western players. Uh, LaFontaine shouldn't be playing for Rockford. He or should Chicago. be. Chicago. I'm sorry. I read it wrong. It was Rockford who scored. They shot uh, on him. Yeah, he's uh, with Chicago. Uh, the Chicago Ch- Wolves. Charlotte. Charlotte. Checkers. Are you sure? Yes. Chicago is the Wolves. Yeah. He's, that's who he's playing with. He's playing for the Chicago Wolves, like, currently. Literally has two goals given up in this game. He's literally playing right now, sir, for the Chicago Wolves. It's just the way the AHL lists how their information is. It's but no, what I'm confused about is the Charlotte Checkers are because he went to Carolina, and the Charlotte yes. Checkers are their AHL team. Aren't they? No. Aren't the Charlotte Checkers an ECHL team? I thought they were, but. Maybe there are. Maybe I'm just very, very confused. I think you're confused, but that's beside the point. Uh, actually, no, I want that open still, so I need to pick another one. Because I thought uh, the Chicago Wolves were the. Uh, or they were the Blues affiliate. Now Springfield is. is the oh, yeah, it is. Chicago. No, please. Hmm. Not right now, sir. Um, yeah, it is Chicago. That. Well, that doesn't I, know, I was looking at it. Um, doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. But. <laughs> none of the teams make sense anymore. Those, the ECHL also changes affiliates so often, and it's kind of ridiculous. A lot of the minor league teams do. Um, it's all right. So do, 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 do. at least in in hockey, it's seemed to become more localized. I with... think they're getting to that point. Yeah. Yeah, because the Iowa Wild used to be the Houston Arrows, but then they decided to move it up a little closer. Oh, right. Winnipeg is nice because the Manitoba Moose play in their same arena, same with the Toronto Marlies. Uh, they try to make it as close as possible, I think, now. Uh, the Charlotte Checkers are the Florida Panthers affiliate. Nope. Seattle Kraken now. Oh, uh, yeah, the Kraken came up and decided they, to screw everything up. They were the Panthers, but now they're the Kraken. Stupid Kraken. Got to screw everything up for everybody. I mean, why wouldn't they? Okay, at least we got it all figured out now. We know who belongs where, allegedly. Yep, we've we've solved all the world's problems. Well, let's not go that far. We've at least solved our own problems for the moment. <laughs> One of our own problems. Yeah. Um, but going back to players who are on the move in, in the transfer portal or moving up to the pro ranks, Carter Savoy, a sophomore from Denver, he is signed with Bakersfield. Bakersfield Oilers, I believe, of the AHL. So the, the college landscape is going to look a lot different next year. And, and he will be playing with uh, Ryan Fanti now because that, that is where Ryan is. Oh, yep. And then Western has gotten a goalie in Cameron Rowe uh, to come in and, and sign as a transfer student, um, fill in, potentially filling in for, for one of the two transfer goalies that we had going the other way, who I don't believe have committed at the moment and then they also have junior defenseman carter berger coming in from connecticut yeah i did see that um and umd we don't have any transfers coming in uh i'm sure that'll change at some point but i also know scott and his staff are probably very confident in the recruiting class that and the guys that have been on the bench to fill the holes that have been left by 
either graduates or the transfers of Lelig and Kelly, even though Lelig has not committed anywhere yet. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how teams shake up and, and what it'll mean for, you know, the conferences and how they play out and what teams end up where. Um, but right now, it, it, I've, it's, and it's kind of a crapshoot because there's been a lot of changes and, and a lot of movement. And again, this could be like the typical amount of movement, and I'm just noticing it now for the first time because I'm actually paying attention. But it, it definitely seems like a lot. Plus, I'm also like... Western has had two senior classes that have all decided to come back, you know. So we really haven't lost too many players in the last couple of years, and and now it's been some some big number of losses. Can you please, sir? Hey, no. hey he just wants to jump in on the conversation. Uh, I think I'm noticing it more now for the first time, as well, because I am paying more attention with us doing this, and. Same thing with UMD. There's not been a whole lot of turnover on our teams the past couple of years. Yeah, we knew some guys were going to be leaving, like Aya follow, um, like uh, like Susie. Um, I can't. There's another forward that I can't think of his name right now. Go in your bed. Go I can, and I can never think of him. I. Picture his face, uh, Carson Kuhlman. That's who I was thinking of. But they were also pretty much seniors. We knew they were going to be leaving, so it wasn't that much of a shock when they left. So yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you guys for the four years. Good luck in the pros. Now it's transfers, and there's a lot of older guys leaving because they stayed that extra year. Yep. So it, it makes everything look a, a lot different so that's what's going to make this early fall exciting looking at who's coming in and trying to figure out where are they going to fit how are they going to do what have they done in the past and i think who was i looking at i want to say it was the writer for the grand forks herald who talks a lot about college hockey and covers und but he was saying like just this idea of you know, how long players are committed to a program. I think next year will be the first time, or no, not next year, because someone decided to come back for an extra year. So 2023 will be the first time that they, they'll they have a player who wasn't recruited or committed to Dave Hextall in the program at UND. Wow. And like... Dave Pexel's on his second NHL franchise and has been out of the program for four or five years? Four years? Uh, at least five, maybe six, because Brad Barry was the coach when they, I'm pretty sure he was the coach when they won their last national title. Was he or was, was Hextel the coach? Uh uh, he, mm, now I have to look that up. Um, I can't remember if Hextel left right after they won the title or if he was... It was the year he left that they won the title. Um, da, 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 da. Like sometimes the years just all blend together and it's hard to figure out what... 2016. Yep, 2016, it was uh, Bradbury was the head coach. And he assumed the position the 2015-2016 season. So yeah. that was his first year. It was the year after so this Hextall is, was his or Hextall. This was his seventh season or sixth season. Seventh. So I mean, you know, the guy's been coaching. Six, six, because 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 21. Oh yeah, seventh. Seventh. Uh, I missed a year in there somewhere in my county. I mean, it's it's fine. and It's bound to happen with the way the last few years have gone. But seven years as the head coach, and you're just now starting to get players who, who were not recruited in any way by the former coach or don't have ties to the former coach. And, and somehow he's been able to, you know, create a dominance at the top of the NCHC, winning 
regular season titles, winning national championships, winning um, NCAA or NCHC tournaments. Mm-hmm. He hasn't really necessarily been able to put his stamp on the team completely. Um, mm-hmm. Just because, you know, he is still getting players who, who were better fits for what Dave was looking to do as opposed to him. So, I mean, that's a, an interesting thing, too. And, and honestly, the fact that he was able to keep a lot of those players and they didn't transfer out. But I guess that's that's part of it. Like, he's been there for a while, too. He's not like a new coach coming in off the streets, either. Yeah, there's that. And then I do know from people that have been recruited, it is possible where colleges say, we were interested, but thanks, but no thanks. We're, we're going to go in a different direction. And the fact that he stayed committed to these players that long also, I think it's a respect, but a knowledge of what Dave Haxtell was doing in the program beforehand and the type of players. And I think there's a little bit of a similarity in how they coach and the way that they want their teams to play. If he's keeping that many of the players and not moving on. So it's, it's a combination of both where the players are staying committed to the program and wanting to wear that UND Jersey. And then also they're fitting with the system and Brad Berry is saying, yeah, you still fit here. You're still going to have a place. You will play for our team. Right. And, and like I said, like Barry, you know, Barry has been around from the creation of that, that culture or it was a mainstay in that culture when some of these guys were committing. Whereas, uh, in the Western, in the case of Western, you know, we, uh, first while was here for a couple of years, right at the beginning when Andy first came in, he stayed, uh, after Blashell's one year here at Western, but then he left and he went to the NHL and was an assistant coach with Blashell again. And, and, uh, guys like Ben Barr, Dave Shyack came into the program and and some of these guys were committing just as much to the associate head coach or or the assistant coach, you know, the guy running the PK or the guy running the defense mm-hmm. or the, or the offensive coach or the power play coach, whatever the case may be, like they're committing to them just as much as they are the head coach. And when all three of those guys are no longer in the program. If you're someone who committed to those three coaches, like you're kind of left in the wind, even though, you know, first Weiler was here for a couple of years before assuming the head coach role. He, he still might've been the offensive coach or the power play coach. And you've got defensemen who don't necessarily see the game the same way he does and, and don't agree with how he coaches or he doesn't agree with the way they play the game. So it creates a little bit of animosity between them and, and, it, one way or the other, you know, someone's going to take whatever role they can and either transfer out or, or not play the game. And transferring out gives them an, up, an opportunity to play. So that's the route they take. And it makes, it makes sense. And going back to that, this explains kind of a lot. Uh, Brad was an assistant coach at North Dakota from 2000 to 2006. Then he went to the Manitoba Moose as an assistant scouted for two years in Vancouver was an assistant for two years in Columbus. And then he came back in 2012 through 2015 as an assistant under Haxtell. So that I think helps with the kids that he's bringing in and he doesn't have his full stamp, but he's also playing the same philosophy and knows these kids that have been recruited from, from 2012 Mm -hmm. on. Which is, geez, that's a decade. Right. I was having that conversation earlier when my wife and I were talking about how long we've been been together. It'll be 13 years in the fall that we've been together. And it'll be five years that we've been married. So. I feel so bad for her. I mean, you know. <laughs> I do too. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's a long time. Yeah, it it is, but it that's why it's worked out so well for Brad and then for the program in general because it's a continuation. Yeah, he's going to have little nuances, but he also he knows what it takes to coach and what type of team he wants there. 
and what type of team has success. A uh, little different if you're thinking of uh, Bob Motzko going to the Gophers, changing the culture completely, where Brett Larson, uh, even yeah, even Brett Larson going from UMD to St. Cloud, he has an idea, but it's still a different team, and he's trying to take over for Bob, where Brad, well, he knows these kids, right? And they're going to buy in. It's going to be easier, easier transition for him. Yeah, and and like I think it's almost more impressive to see college coaches create and establish something more so than than pro coaches in some mm-hmm. regards because you can sign a guy to ten years or you can sign a guy to to five years and and he's being paid so he's he's got this motivation to stay there but you know the most you're going to get a college kid for is four or five years depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, you and you still have to get the kid and. It, you might not get the kids you want. You still have to make do. And if you don't get the kids you want and you still have established a culture and you establish a winning program, look at what American International has done. Oh, here's the other thing I was looking at. I was like, there's been a lot of people transferring, I believe, from Air Force. That's what I was seeing. I was like, that's kind of interesting. How does that work out when I'm pretty sure like you have a commitment both to the Air Force as a military branch and as a hockey team? Um, so I, that's something that I was like, all right, what is happening here? When I was I looking at it, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw some people from Air Force trying to transfer out or entering the transfer portal. Oh, um. And even possibly one from Army, um, so that was that was kind of interesting, because like I said, I don't understand that stuff at all. Um, I know there's been a few like football players who had to uh, either figure out a way around it, or you know, ask for certain circumstances to allow them to be drafted and play in the NFL, and others who. They were told, no, you have to fulfill your your military obligation that you committed to and either put your pro career on hold or, or no pros for you. So, I, I do know that changed a few years ago, and uh, the Twins, we do have a pitcher in Griffin Jacks. He is a captain in the Air Force Reserve. So he is Captain Griffin Jacks, uh, graduated from the Air Force Academy and was able to play in – the Vikings had drafted a long snapper, Austin Cutting, from the Air Force Academy as well, and he was able to play, and that was changed about five or six years ago. That, that was changed, uh, which I do think is a is a good thing. You only get a chance at the pros once, and you are still going to be young enough allegedly to fulfill your duty as a military officer. Uh, but if you have this opportunity, it helps a lot of, it helps a lot of things. And it, it's good for, good for the kids that they get to live out a dream. I mean, there's, there's a lot of programs that the military runs like sports related. There's what is it? World-class athlete, something like program where like you uh you see some of the olympians in stuff like taekwondo Mm -hmm. and wrestling and um they're essentially military personnel Mm -hmm. but their military service is done by competing in these sports um you know it's kind of like how russia used to run their hockey their their hockey team that was their military obligation fulfillment was to play Mm -hmm. hockey and to play hockey well so you know and a lot of, i think quite a few other countries do that i know there is it um where is koivu from finland i believe fin is it finland that uh there's a number of players who will go back in the off season and, and do their like mm-hmm. part of their military obligation because yeah so uh there's someone else that did it too 
the minimum is three months and Koivu and Granlin went back and they did fulfilled their military duty the same year they they were in the same uh, uh, I guess it would be company platoon I don't I don't know we have we have one of those things Ben and John and Kat and Matt and they can all yell at us for I'd have to actually watch yeah. first in order to, to know that we messed up so oh that, that is true let's We'll just say we didn't broadcast for him. <laughs> um, but I think, I think you know, we said it was going to be a pretty or a shorter episode. We're not too far off of what we normally do. Um, and by we might be actually hit an hour after my blathering here at the end of every episode. But I think we're going to call it there. Um, we'll try and get into more in depth as, as more news comes out. Uh, and we'll, we'll start, hopefully the schedules will come out soon. I'm not sure when the schedules are due. It might be a little bit later into the summer, spring yeah. and summer. You have the, the conference schedules out, but the non-conference are, are not out yet. Yeah. And I'd rather just kind of do it once instead of having to do it twice and eat 16 weeks of, by that point, we're going to be back into the year, the season already potentially. Um, so you know episodes might be a little bit shorter we are work like i said we're working on stuff we're always trying to figure stuff out on the back end to make episodes a little bit better both visually for those who who watch it and content wise as far as behind the scenes where messages have been sent messages have been received um we're just trying to nail down some final details on at least a couple and reaching out to more people here and there so big things coming hopefully I'm excited for him. I'm, I'm pretty sure Mike's excited for him. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we can be both be reached at Twitter. Our Twitter accounts are on the screen. Mine is right, wrong hand right there. And Michael's is right there. And then there's a show one that'll be, no other side. There's a show one that'll be in, in the description when this hits uh, the YouTubes. Um, probably tomorrow morning which will be Wednesday for those who are seeing it on the YouTubes already. Um, you know, hit like buttons, hit follow buttons, hit subscribe buttons, whatever it is that floats your boat. Hit dislike buttons. Hit I don't ever want to see this again buttons. I don't care. That's up to you. Um, if you're a human, you can make a decision. So do those, make decisions. We'll be here because we have nothing better to do at 9 o'clock on Tuesday nights than talk about hockey live on Twitch to very few people, so... Mostly just each other, because no one ever wants to respond in, in the comment sections. But leave a comment somewhere, or don't. I don't care. It's fine. It's whatever. Um, Again, and, you're an adult. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. You're, you're a person. You can yeah, make yeah. decisions. You're, you're, that's, that, that is right. There could be some younger viewers who find things and, and click on them. We don't, we don't always swear, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that, that's going to do it for this episode, and we'll catch you in on the next one. Thanks a lot. Adios.